Oh well, hello. It's time to ruin our files some more. This is part four of this video series. If this is the first one you are viewing, some things might make more sense if you start with part one. If not, welcome back. Anyway, let's begin. One of the biggest complaints about the Master Cycle in Breath of the Wild is that you only get it after you've basically completed everything. You normally have to free all four Divine Beasts, and then complete the entirety of the Champion's Ballad Quest to get it. But with the power of Moon Jump Wrong Warping, we can skip all of that. On one condition. It requires us to have an adjacent file in Normal or Master Mode that already has access to the final trial. Which sucks, because even among those who have the DLC, not everyone can follow along. For those that can, here is what to do. Starting from the file we're ruining, or rather the file you want to get the early master cycle on, we need to place our travel medallion in a specific spot. Right here on the western side of Whistling Hill. This is what the surrounding area looks like for reference. Place down your travel medallion here, and save your game. Return to the title screen, and then load the file you have that has access to the final trial. Mine is my master mode file. Have your travel medallion placed down anywhere, and then go activate Moon Jump. Steps on how to do that is covered in part two. Fast travel to the Shrine of Resurrection and enter the final trial. Now, if for some reason you never got the map for the final trial, you would be able to skip steps 8 through 13 by simply fast traveling to the travel medallion from here. But if you're a normal person, you'll have gotten the map, so we'll have to do a little extra to do that. What we can do is enter the Mazkosha boss fight, then open the map, and fast travel to the travel medallion. Return to the title screen, change modes, and load the file you're ruining. Now, manually save your game. Okay, so that new save will spawn us inside the final trial when we load it. And it looks like everything we could want, but there's an issue. We can't interact with Mazkosha's blue box thingy, and we won't be able to until we open this door which is locked and can only be opened on the other side. So here's what we can do. Go to an apparatus shrine, such as Maya Magana in Hatano. There's more to the apparatus glitch than just transferring hearts and stamina between saves. It also allows us to commune with the void. It can help us get where we want. Perform the camera glitch. Equip a shield, your camera rune, hold ZL, then press L, left stick, and X at the same time. Activate the apparatus pedestal in this state, and then delete the picture. Quickly pause the game, and hold a material. Unpause, quickly pause again, and then view a memory. This gives us control of Link while the apparatus is active, for as long as we don't open another menu. Jump off into the void. If a voiding out doesn't actually occur, they've agreed to help. Now, just reload the save you made in step 7. Upon reloading it, the void will place us right where we need to be, right above Mazkosha's arena. Then, just defeat Mazkosha. He's harder than Calamity Ganon, but that's not saying much. If you die and need to try again, 
just repeat steps 8 through 14. But hey, we're ruining our files here. What part of that implies that we need to fight him fair and square? We can skip phase 1 of the fight by jumping up really high until they get stuck. Yo, did he just sit there and spin dash? But maybe that's not enough. That's still doing most of the fight normally. You don't want to feel accomplished. Don't worry. I got a solution for you. But there's a catch. You'll need to complete the final trial by activating all of the terminals. And you'll need to start showing some devotion to the void. Just follow my lead. Deactivate Moon Jump. And then commune with the void. Business as usual. You just need it to transport you again. No need to express anything, it knows you are grateful. This time, it will bring us to the main room of the final trial. Walk back to where the elevator should be, and Mazkosha will tell you about the place. This sets our respawn coordinates by the elevator. Save your game, and then complete the final trial as normal. Once you open the large door and can interact with Mazkosha's big blue box, enter the fight, but don't actually fight him yet, just save your game. This will have you spawn you by his big blue box again when reloaded. Now, it's time to prove yourself. We're going to commune with the void again, but with some variation. Go to an apparatus shrine. Once inside, drop all of your fairies if you have any. Your faith won't mean anything if you have them. Now, you're going to need to self-flagellate, until you're within an inch of your life, blinking red. Perform the camera glitch. Activate the apparatus pedestal in this state, and then delete the picture. Quickly pause the game and hold a material. Unpause, quickly pause again, and then view a memory. Now, it would be obvious to our mortal minds that falling off, death would be certain. but if you've been following along precisely, there's nothing to worry about. Leap into the void with your heart open. If favor is gained, the last of it will be taken. You are worthy of its blessing. Pause the game, restore your life with food, and then reload your save at Maz Kosha. challenge him, and, well, let's just say whatever remains won't put up much of a fight. In 
now you got a sick, nasty ride. Try not to neglect your five-speed horse too much. <laughs> This again. I'm sorry, but this is the best way to completely negate the purpose of finding new equipment. I'll cover it nicely this time. No need to reference back to older videos. If you feel like you're a master of menu overloading and have no trouble with it at all, you may want to skip to 3107. Let me try to make this simple. In order to duplicate equipment, transfer durability, or get infinite gems, we need to desync our equipment. This is our holy grail. But what the heck is equipment desync? It's when what Link has equipped in his inventory and what he has equipped on himself does not match. For example, in my inventory, I have the soup ladle equipped, as noted by it being highlighted by blue. However, when unpaused, you'll notice that Link is not holding that on his person. He's holding a Korok leaf instead. This is an equipment desync. But how do we reach this holy grail? There's a couple of ways, but the easiest is through the power of menu overloading. And that looks like this. It makes a lot of in-game functions fail to register. This allows for a plethora of ways to softlock the game, but mainly we're interested in the fact that it causes equipment desyncs when you try to equip something. Stop mocking me! But how do I overload the menu? There's quite a few known ways, but mostly it consists of leaving around a bunch of crap that is memory intensive. To make it easy to understand, look at this imaginary bar. If you fill it, the menu will be overloaded. Here are the things that will let you do that. Number one, location. Certain areas contribute to overloading the menu more than others. For example, Fort Hatano is a fantastic place to overload the menu, as you will need less things to do so. Hyrule Castle, on the other hand, sucks. It contributes very little for your overloading efforts. Most areas seem to be quite average, but there's quite a few that stand out, either for better or worse. Be sure to give these areas a visit if you're struggling to reach that overloaded threshold. Number two, time. As I've learned, just staying in the same general area long enough will contribute to overloading the menu, to a point. Of course, this and location alone will never be enough to reach the necessary threshold but it's good to keep in mind that sticking around for one to three minutes might be the small push you need to reach it, with other things contributing. Number three, Octo Balloons. Through testing, I've found that this is the most memory intensive material. You can drop up to 10 on the ground, and they each contribute a tiny amount to overloading. Nothing substantial, but again, they could help you get the small push you need. Number four, Elemental Rods. These bad boys contribute a decent amount when Link has them equipped, when dropped on the ground, and even when they show up on Link's inventory preview. This makes Elemental Rods one of the few known things that let you contribute to overloading the menu without unpausing the game. You may find that to be quite helpful for when the menu is only almost overloaded. Number five, multi-shot bows and shock arrow. These are the baddest of boys, and what we will be relying on the most. Link simply holding a multi-shot bow with a shock arrow contributes a lot. But of course, we can only hold one at a time, and that's not enough. If we drop that bow while holding it in our hands though, it won't contribute as much, but still a big tasty amount. And with our hands free, we can drop more multi-shot bows from our hands until we reach that threshold. It's clear on what's the most powerful, so let's go get a shock arrow and some multi-shot bows. You can buy some shock arrows at Laurel and Village. Hi. 
and can grab up to seven duplex bows from the Yiga clan hideout area. Now, to overload the menu, just follow along. Equip a multi-shot bow and your shock arrows, unpause, and unsheathe your bow. This is important, it can't be on your back. Go into your inventory and drop the multi-shot bow you have equipped, and then equip the next one. Unpause, and it should already be unsheathed, so you're good to continue. Repeat steps 3 and 4 until you've dropped all of your multi-shot bows, except for one. You might want to keep that one held in your hands, as it contributes more that way. And with that, your menu should be overloaded until you pick up the bows. Bonus method! If you don't want to carry six multi-shot bows around, there's another way that only requires you to have two, though you're far more limited when it comes to desyncing bows. You see, the overloading power of a multi-shot bow on the ground doesn't vanish immediately upon picking it up. It lingers for a little bit. If we're heckin' fast, we can take advantage of that. Find a surface you can have links back to so that when you drop something from your inventory, it appears in front of Link. Equip your multi-shot bow, shock arrows, and unsheathe them. Go into your inventory, drop the multi-shot bow you have equipped, and equip the next one. In very quick succession, unpause, press A to pick the bow back up, then pause again. Repeat steps 3 and 4 until the menu is overloaded, and then you'll have your chance to desync anything you need to. Alright, now that you know how to overload, let us understand our holy grail of equipment desync. When the menu is overloaded, as mentioned before, a lot of functions fail to register. That includes successfully equipping something. When you try to equip something while the menu is overloaded, it will often simply highlight that thing, but change nothing for Link in the overworld, causing an equipment desync. But what does this accomplish? There's quite a bit of stuff that this can let us do, but here's the big three main things. Let's start with the Infinite Gems exploit. First, we need a piece of Royal Guard equipment. They can be found at Hyrule Castle. Then, head to the Riverside Stable. There's a girl named Parsi there, who at first has a quest where she'll give you a gold rupee for showing her a piece of Royal Guard equipment. After you do that, talking to her again, and she'll offer to trade some gems for them. However, if you do this while holding another piece of equipment, but are desynced to the Royal Guard equipment she's asking for, it can't be removed from your inventory, and you get the gem for free. There is an exception, though. If you have multiple pieces of the same Royal Guard equipment, for example, three Royal Guard swords, she will manage to take your extra ones before getting stuck and not being able to take the one you desynced to. So if you do do this, maybe drop your extra ones if you don't want to lose them. So let's go over the exact steps. Talk to Parsi and see which piece of Royal Guard equipment she wants. Then decline the offer. Equip anything but the thing she's asking for. Overload the menu.
go to your inventory and desync to the piece of Royal Guard equipment she wants. In my case, she wanted the sword. Pick up your bows and drop any extra pieces of that same equipment if you have any. Talk to her and keep accepting her offer. Once you're satisfied with your amount of free gems, you can sell them to Beetle for a good amount of rupees, which we might need later. When you have an equipment desync and do something to damage the weapon, bow, or shield Link is holding, the durability value gets updated to whatever is equipped inside the menu. For example, I'll normally equip this used pot lid but desync to this fresh knight's shield. When I damage the pot lid by surfing on it, the durability value gets updated to the knight's shield in my inventory. I transferred its current durability value, minus one because I had to damage it once to update it. I could even keep updating it to be lower and lower until it's at zero and breaks. Now the knight's shield is at zero durability. When I equip it, it just immediately breaks. Of course, we don't want to make things have even less durability. We want them to have more. So naturally, we'll want some undamaged equipment with a lot of durability. If you didn't know, you can see if a piece of equipment is at its regular full durability, denoted by the sparkle when viewed in your inventory. I'll show you what the most durable equipment is after, but for now, this is what you would do. Equip your high durability weapon and shield, Overload the menu. For weapons, desync to the weapon you want to receive the high durability. Unpause and jump attack to hit the ground. For shields, desync to the shield you want to receive the high durability. Unpause and shield surf in place. Make sure you're not shield surfing on sand, snow, gravel, or dirt road, as those won't damage your shield, thus not updating the durability. For bows, this can be trickier. Unless you're trying to transfer durability from a multi-shot bow, you might have some trouble equipping your high durability bow and desyncing to the bow you want to receive the durability. Doing that in succession requires a pretty specific amount of overloading. Since it's kind of an inconsistent mess, here's something you can do if you're having trouble. Drop your high durability bow on the ground, and then overload the menu as much as you can without any bows equipped. Try to get to the point where you can't successfully equip anything. Utilize any of these if you have to. Once you're there, pick up your high durability bow, unsheathe it with a shock arrow for good measure, desync to the bow you want to receive the durability, then shoot the bow once to transfer it. And there you go! You can keep desyncing and transferring the durability to the next thing. Though keep in mind if you don't unequip and re-equip your high durability thing first, you'll be transferring one less durability each time. Remember, you can do this more than once. If one of your favorite weapons is badly damaged, you can use durability transfer to repair it on the spot, as long as you don't mind carrying around a bunch of multi-shot bows and your unused high durability equipment. Once you have an equipment desync, it's possible to duplicate the equipment held by Link in the overworld. 
All you have to do is get it out of his hands. Naturally, to do that, you might just want to go into your inventory and drop it. And while yes, you will officially see two of them now, one in your hands and one on the ground. But we can't really keep both without sacrificing the thing we're desynced to. Dropping the thing you were desynced to will replace it with whatever was in your hand, which is fine if you're okay with replacing that equipment, but there's ways to duplicate instead of replacing. Equip what you want to duplicate, overload the menu, and desync that equipment. Now, there's three different ways you can duplicate it. If it's a weapon that can be thrown, just throw it and pick it back up. Shock yourself to get disarmed, and then pick it up. This is helpful for equipment that you can't throw, such as shields, bows, and some weapons. Hang it up on a display mount in your house, and then take it back. This also works for all equipment, as long as you have the house and the relevant display mounts. If you're duping more than one thing, you might have trouble equipping the next thing you want to dupe, or desyncing it right after, as doing both in succession without changing anything requires a very specific amount of menu overloading power. You'll likely have to reduce the amount of things overloading the menu to successfully equip the thing you want to dupe, and then increase it again to allow for equipment desyncs. Also, you should be glad to know that any duped equipment keeps the durability the original had, even if it's way higher than what is normally possible. That's why it's a good idea to transfer durability first, and then duplicate. Now that I've taught you how to dupe and transfer durability between equipment, let's talk about equipment worth doing this with. For powerful weapons that you might want to have a lot of durability, you'll probably want to have the Royal Guard weapons, or the Savage Lionel weapons, alongside all of these which act as great tools for both in combat and outside of it. For bows, you can't go wrong with the Savage Lionel bow for damage output, especially when it's got its 5-shot modifier. The Royal Guard bow, my personal preference, comes with high damage and the fastest firing rate of all bows, and even more so with the quick shot modifier. And following that, the Great Eagle Bow with the second fastest firing rate, coupled with its multi-shot and decent damage. For shields? Obviously there's the Hylian Shield, having the highest durability and a guard of 90. But honestly, we can use it to give any shield we want that durability, and having a guard that high is almost completely useless, as the majority of instances where you can disarm or stagger an enemy's attack with your shield can be done with a relatively average shield's guard. And we don't really have to worry about its resistance to durability loss, since we're cheesing durability anyway. The shield you'll probably want is the Ancient Shield. For shield surfing, it comes with the second least amount of friction, right behind the Radiant Shield, the lowest ride to break ratio with a 0.2, meaning that shield surfing on it reduces durability 80% slower than the average shield, and it can directly reflect guardian lasers when blocked normally. How to obtain these are common knowledge. If you don't know how, a simple Google search will probably tell you. Now, let's talk about high durability equipment that'd be best to use for durability transfer. First off, some misconceptions. The one-hit obliterator and bow of light don't have infinite durability. They have 40 and 100 durability. They just can't be damaged. The fully upgraded master sword, despite lasting 188 hits, also only has 40 durability. 
it just loses 0.2 durability upon hit, except for when it's badly damaged, then it loses durability by 1 again. So these don't help us. The highest durability weapon and bow are the Big Goron Sword with durability up, and the Twilight Bow with durability up. If you have these amiibo, you might want to check out the video in the info tab, which will tell you how to get them more consistently as a drop. Moving down the list, the next best weapon and bow for high durability is the Spring-Loaded Hammer and the Ancient Bow. I can't get the Spring-Loaded Hammer. It too requires us to have freed at least one Divine Beast, but the biggest problem is that I can't even meet Kilton because it's forever 5.15am, and I don't feel like activating the intro cutscene to let time start moving, so I'm just gonna go easy on myself and grab this double axe. You might be thinking, hey, you forgot about shields. I excluded mentioning it here because I think this deserves its own section. You'll probably just end up settling with a regular Hylian shield, 800 durability is nothing to scoff at, but if you're dedicated, you could have more. The shield with the highest possible durability is the Hylian shield with durability up plus, ranging from 1017 to 1160 durability. Or maybe 800 is plenty, but you're interested in boasting some visible numbers, getting the Hylian shield with guard up, which can get up to 144. Obtaining the Hylian Shield with modifiers is not common knowledge. It's often presented with misleading information or explanations not in-depth enough. What I can tell you now is that getting it is a one-time opportunity. The Hylian Shield can only receive modifiers when obtained from the chest in the lockup, which will never respawn again after taking it. Buying it from Grante will never give it any. So when you find yourself in Hyrule Castle's lockup after you defeated the Stalnox, you're gonna have to make a choice. After this, there is no turning back. You take the Hylian shield as it is. The story ends. From this point on, you live happily with its plain stats. Or, you show restraint, not opening the chest, and I show you how far you'll have to go for something better.